Come with me now as we go to the shortest version in the Bible. The shortest verse in the Bible. Who knows what it is? All right, all right. Turn to John 11th chapter, the 35th verse. And let us stand together. And as they so proudly answered it, let us all say it together. Jesus wept. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Jesus wept. Amen. Come, thou Holy Father. Come now and abide with us. Come touch in a mighty way. Help us to understand this clearer and clearer each and every day. Help us, Lord, to unpack these words in a new way. And look at it from your perspective, not ours. Remove me from me and hide me behind the cross. So that your people may hear your word despite of what I may say or do. For your word is far more sufficient than I will ever be. And I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus well. I want to speak about the tears of Jesus. The tears of Jesus. This particular verse, as stated, is the shortest in the Bible, but is probably the most meaningful verse of all. But very seldom do we appear to look at the meaning of this verse, we, we simply used it when we couldn't think of anything else. Amen. But Jesus wept. And we want to look at why did Jesus wept? Why did tears come out of the eyes of Jesus? Well, there's a lot of things we can talk about, but this verse is also one of the most powerful verses because this verse shows the power of Jesus' divinity and also the power of his humanity. Well, how do you do that? Well, it's easy to say <clears throat> that in the man of Jesus... He was Mary's baby. But in the spirit of Jesus, he our Savior. In the man of Jesus, <coughs> he was a carpenter. The builder. But in the spirit of Jesus, he is the builder of life. In the man of Jesus, he is the provider of bread. But in the spirit of Jesus, he is the bread of life. In the man of Jesus, he is a late arrival. But in the spirit of Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. His humanity, but yet his power of divinity. Well, the tears of Jesus. Here, Jesus wept because of what was going on, or was he weeping because of what was not going on? Well, the tears of Jesus. Number one, the tears of Jesus deals with the frustration of Jesus. All right, now. Jesus was frustrated. That's right. He was frustrated, one, because of what the disciples did not do. Mm. Yeah. In many instances, 
says, <coughs> we want to wait on Jesus. <laughs> well, this was a time when Jesus had taught and the disciples had followed. And here comes a time when Lazarus got sick. Yeah. The sisters got together. And they wanted Jesus. That's right. That's right. Y'all don't hear me? They wanted Jesus. The disciples did not or even attempt to use what God has given them. So the sister said, Go and, and get a word to Jesus. Yeah. How many of you with me when you say when you're in trouble, yeah. you don't want anybody hanging around right. talking and trying to comfort you. Right. You want somebody who can get a word yeah. to Jesus. in this passage of scripture Jesus took him two more days <laughs> even after receiving the word and, and I just had to scratch my head there because I'm wondering here, here, here Jesus they sent for Jesus and you know we all want Jesus amen Lord we all want Jesus. But, but here, Jesus takes him two more, two more days, remember? Two more days. We want a Burger King Jesus. Amen. Frustrated. He took him two more days. So glad to have you. You will later around with you. two more days but see you can't understand when you know what, what got me hung up if, 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 if him and Mary and Martha and Lazarus was all that tight brother bro right. right. they were really tight and headed like that yeah. Yeah. wouldn't you think that Jesus would have got up and shot You know, uh, somebody, help me there. You tight and you all, you got it like that. And right. something happened in the family, you called the preacher. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take me two more days. All right. All right. All right. Well, I'm taking two more days of meeting now. Right. Amen. That may be my last too. Amen. But Jesus <laughs> took two more days. Yeah. Two more days. Yeah. First strength. First strength. Tears of Jesus is about frustration. Well, well. Mary and Martha were frustrated. That's right. And the frustrating tears of Jesus was here to, to comfort them in distance. Sometimes when, when we think that we need a resolution and a, and a solution to the problem right here, right now, it, it, it sometimes means that we need to work on something. We might need the formal. We, we, we might need to decide whether or not we need to add, subtract, multiply, divide. All right. All right. All right. We got a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But here, what Mary and Martha failed to understand. 
understand is that they sent for the right man. Yeah. They had no reason to be frustrated. Yes, but how many of us do the same thing? Yeah. We have called on Jesus. Yeah. We are saying we are putting it in his hand. Yeah. But we get frustrated and it delayed. Times we we want to handle what 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 God has already done. God has already put the plan together. What what? Why do you think your plan is better than God? What, what, what gives you the audacity to think that you can outthink God? If God's plan is already in action, the tears of frustration want God to do it in our time rather than to do it in his time. How many of you know that he's an on time God? And his time is never, never late. It may be a late arrival for you and me. But he's on time. He's on time. He's on time. Why get frustrated when you're serving an on time God? Tears of frustration. That's right. But secondly, there were tears of aggravation. Well, yeah. well what going on there? Yeah. Uh -huh. See, he understand that they sent for him. That's right. But see, they just sent and told him. That Lazarus is sick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they didn't say that Lazarus was sick to death. All right. Uh -huh. They just said in one translation yeah. that he was sick. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, mm. how many of us? Call on the name of Jesus. Yeah, come on, God. Only when we sit. I don't want y'all to miss this one. We normally call on Jesus when we sit in the physical. Come on. But see, there's some sickness going on in the spirit. But for some reason, the church doesn't want to call on Jesus when the spirit of sickness is going on. You know, that's when we need to call on.
Jesus. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> but even there, even there, even there, even there, we got to understand that the calling on Jesus is one thing, but have you ever used what Jesus has already given you? I'll never forget, I went to the hospital to visit a man who was on his deathbed. And I say deathbed. This man had one foot on the banana peel and the other one already over the hole. Right. Amen. All right. And I got there and I began to minister to him and, mm -hmm. and talk with him. And I, I asked a big question. like we can't do it unless the preacher around. You know, when the Lord got me on my deathbed, I don't want you pulling out your cell phone trying to Facebook it, Instagram it. Amen. I want you to get on your knees and get a word to Jesus. Stop sitting around waiting on somebody to do what God has already given you the authority to do. He has given the whole church the authority. But the Bible also says we don't pray as we ought. That's right. Amen. We don't pray as we ought. But he still claims that all things work together for the good. Tears of frustration. Yes. Tears of activation. Finally, last but not least, tears of identification. Yes. Mm. Right. Tears of identification. Right. Now, now, what makes the difference in the two? Mm. We have Martha and Mary, both calling for Jesus. Yeah. And, but see, Martha had that get on. Martha was a night ward girl. <laughs> Amen. Straight out the project.
But notice how the Mary got through talking with him. He, he, he groaned in his soul. Notice he got up. He was ready to go do something. He was ready to go do something. See, it's the difference at, at, at going in. a lesson. speaking. If you notice, it was all after Mary was spoke. It troubled his spirit. And it was all after Mary has spoke to the word, to the word, that he began to get up and go to Lazarus' grave. It was all after Mary spoke that Jesus wept and tears began to roll down his eyes. And it was all after Mary spoke that he said, let's go and get Lazarus. And he began to go down and he said, take ye stone away. And uh, Mary and Martha were sitting there and some of the others had gathered around and they began to say, well, Jesus uh -huh. yeah. is going to stay when you move the stone. Uh -huh. mm. right. But I'm so glad today that steak didn't stop yeah. my Jesus. Right. Right. Steak didn't stop him for doing what he needed to do. Uh, well. See, because Jesus knew that he didn't have to go inside right. and lay hands right. upon him. Yeah. Jesus knew that he didn't have to go any further than where he was. Yes. Jesus knew that all he had to do yes. was call. was told to me about this chess player. He was the best chess player in the country. He was the one that said they called him master chess player. And the master chess player decided to take a trip to the local museum.
one more move on today that your king has one more move no matter what life has thrown at you no matter what situation you're in Tears of frustration. Tears of frustration. See, the king had one more move. And the man didn't know that the king was going to sacrifice it all. It was the king who was going to sacrifice his life. For the life of the man's soul. Isn't that what he did? Isn't that what he did? Did he die? Did he die? Somebody say he died. Somebody say he died. Did he die? Yeah. He died. But I. Not so much that you and I are worthy. It's the fact that he has one more move that he can make for you and I. And he made it for you and for me. Because see, the chicken used to tell the pig how much he sacrificed. To give you scrambled eggs in the morning. But the pig said that every time you see bacon, I've sacrificed it all. Yeah. Yeah. Put it all on the altar. Last sacrifice lay. See, so many of us are carrying around extra baggage that we don't need to carry around. All we got to do is just come to the altar and dump it right here. Leave it at the altar. The bag is out of it. The Bible said, if you have it on, look at your brother. Don't come and take this from me. Thank you. 